Hi, my name is Sean Campbell, and today I'm going to show you how to implement the singleton design pattern in C Sharp. The singleton design pattern is a creational design pattern that ensures that a class can only have a single instance and it provides a global point of access anywhere in the application to that instance. It basically restricts the instantiation of a class to a single object, allowing that object to be easily accessible throughout the application. Some common use cases of the singleton pattern includes using it for a logging system. Other use cases includes using it for the database connection that your application connects to so that there's one globally accessible method for obtaining the database connection. You can also use the singleton pattern to implement a configuration manager. You might want to have a single instance of the configuration manager to avoid reading the configuration from files or databases multiple times. You could also use the singleton pattern to implement a cache manager so that you have a single accessible instance containing certain cache that is accessible anywhere in the application. Okay, so now it's time to code the singleton pattern. There are four well-known ways that you can implement the singleton pattern in C-sharp, including the classic singleton, also known as the lazy initialization singleton, the thread safe singleton, also known as the double check locking singleton, the lazy generic singleton, and finally the static initialization singleton. As mentioned before, there are several recommended use cases for using the singleton pattern. Therefore, we are going to base our implementation on the logging system use case. So let's start by creating our first singleton class and call it classic singleton logger. So this is obviously based on the classic singleton approach to implementing the singleton pattern also known as the lazy initialization approach as mentioned. So firstly, let's go ahead and create a private static field for our singleton instance. So say private static classic singleton logger and call it instance. Next, and very importantly, create a private constructor for the classic singleton logger. And this is to ensure that client code cannot bypass the single instance instantiation method by calling the classic singleton logger constructor. And then another standard approach to implementing the singleton pattern is to have a method that we call get instance that returns the classic singleton logger in our case. And that method will actually be responsible for instantiating that very single instance of the classic singleton logger. So let's say public static classic singleton logger, call it get instance. And then to implement this method, we'll say if the instance is null, we'll go ahead and instantiate it. And if it's not, we'll return the already instantiated instance of the singleton class. All right, and that's all you have to do for the classic singleton approach to implementing the singleton pattern. Now, we did say that we are basing this on the logger use case. So let's go ahead and add two methods. This must be instance methods, not static methods. So say public void log and the first one would be simply logging an exception. So let's keep this simple to focus on the singleton pattern implementation rather than focusing on some or the other specific functionality. So we could simply say console.writeline and then simply say ex.toString. The toString method will also log the entire stack trace. Okay, and then let's add an overloaded method. And this is for simply logging some information. So we can simply have a single parameter and you can call it message. 
and again extremely simple console dot right line and pass in the message okay so this is all we have to do for a classic singleton logger you might ask but why do we need other forms of implementing the classic singleton this is a good way of implementing it now the problem with the classic singleton approach is that it's not thread safe and let's go ahead and solve that problem in the next way for implementing the singleton pattern and that is the thread safe singleton so create another class and call it thread safe singleton logger okay so the first thing that we need to do for implementing the thread safe singleton is to add a private field for the lock object so say private static read only and then it's of type object now the lock keyword is a reserved keyword i would have liked to use that you can either say at lock to get past that issue or use another name like thread safe lock equals new object all right so now we have our lock object the second object that we need to declare is our singleton instance again so you can go over to the classic singleton logger and simply copy that we also need our private constructor so copy both right and then we can also go ahead and copy the get instance method we'll just make it thread safe just now now the problem here is we need to change the types all right and now to make it thread safe so we'll say if the instance is null we will lock using our locking object thread safe lock and then we'll again do that same check remember it's also called the double check locking so we'll then say if the instance is null then we'll actually instantiate the new thread safe singleton logger and then if it's already been instantiated we'll simply return that single instance okay now you might say hang on are we now going to copy and paste this logging method too now generally in your application you'll only have one approach to implementing the singleton logger so you wouldn't need to do anything about this but this will bother me so let's create a new class and call it singleton base and then i'm simply going to move the log methods to the singleton base class okay i'm going to make it an abstract class and then add both those log methods in there and then we can simply go ahead and extend the singleton base class and then we'll have access to those methods okay and then let's do the same for the thread safe singleton logger okay so now we have completed the implementation of the thread safe singleton logger like i said it looks a lot like the classic singleton approach but this time we've got our lock object we want to make sure that multiple threads don't cause a race condition so then we'll lock on the thread safe lock object then check again if that instance is null if it is we'll create that instance only once and then if it's already been instantiated we'll return that very same instance the next approach is the lazy generic singleton so let's create a new class and call it lazy singleton logger so the first thing that we need to do is to create a private static read only field using the lazy generic class and our type there will be the lazy singleton logger and then we can call that instance again and then say equals new lazy initialized logger 
And then importantly, we also need to instantiate the lazy singleton logger in the constructor of the generic lazy class. So we can use Lambda here. We can say new lazy singleton logger. All right. And that's all we have to do there. Again, we need a private constructor to prevent the client code from bypassing the get instance method. So we'll say private lazy singleton logger as our only constructor. And then again, our public static get instance method that is going to return lazy singleton logger. Again, call it get instance and then simply return the instance, but this time say dot value because our field is actually lazy, generic type lazy singleton logger. Okay, and then also extend the singleton base to make sure that it's got access to the log methods. Okay, so now we've already implemented three approaches to implementing the singleton pattern, the classic, the thread safe, and the lazy singleton logger. All right, and then the final one is the static singleton. So let's create a new class and call it static singleton logger. Okay. Again, a private static read only field of static singleton logger, call it instance. And then we are also going to eagerly instantiate it. New static singleton logger. Right. Again, the private constructor. And then our public static get instance method that returns static singleton logger, call it get instance, and then return the instance. Okay, so now we've implemented the classic singleton. We've also implemented the thread safe singleton. We've also implemented the lazy generic singleton, and we've implemented the static singleton. Just make sure that all of them extends the singleton base so that we've got access to those log methods. Classic does have it. The thread safe does have it. The lazy singleton does have it and the static singleton too. Okay, so now it's time for us to test our code. So let's go to the program.cs class. This is the shorthand of the main method. If you're not familiar with the latest versions of .NET and let's go ahead and create two variables. We'll use the abstract type as per the dependency inversion principle that states that you should depend on abstractions and not concretions. So singleton base, singleton one, equals classic singleton logger. We'll test that one first dot get instance. It's a static method. That's why we can do this. And then let's create another singleton variable. Now this should return the very same instance, but we need to test that. So let's say singleton one, if it's equal to singleton two, then we'll print out something to the console console dot right line and we can say something like same instance singleton pattern correctly implemented All right okay and then since these two variables should point to the same instance we can only log using one of them so let's say singleton one dot log and then we can log something like this message is logged using a singleton logging system okay so let's go ahead and test our code i'm going to add a breakpoint there hit f5 and then i'm going to step into the code so the first time the instance should be null that's correct we instantiate it and then we'll return that instance the second time around, we'll see that it's not null. There is actually an instance and it returns that very same instance. 
and then to test if the singleton pattern has been correctly implemented we need to see if both variables are the same and they are in fact the same we'll say same instance singleton pattern correctly implemented and then log this message is logged using a singleton logging system as you can see down there so now we know that the classic singleton logger has been correctly implemented let's go ahead and test the thread safe singleton logger so we only need to change those two again let's run it now i'm not going to try and simulate multiple threads trying to access the same resource at a time but you're welcome to do so let's simply step into the code the instance is null we use the thread safe lock object we do the double check is it still null yes it is and then we instantiate the new thread safe singleton logger we return the instance then the next time around the instance is not null and we'll simply return the instance there so let's test if singleton one is the same as singleton two and it is it's the same instance singleton pattern correctly implemented and then we'll invoke the log method on the singleton base and we write the message is locked using a singleton logging system let's go ahead and test the third approach to implementing the singleton pattern and that is the lazy singleton logger where we used the lazy generic class okay so let's go ahead and run that then we'll step into it now remember this was already eagerly instantiated up there so we will simply return that very one instance the reason we're invoking dot value is because it actually returns lazy generic of type lazy singleton logger and then dot value returns lazy singleton logger only okay and this will do exactly the same because it has been eagerly instantiated is the same instance and we lock this message is locked using a singleton logging system the last one to test is the static singleton logger okay and this is similar to the lazy generic singleton but this time it's only eagerly instantiated up there we return that very one instance and the same this time around it's the same instance but let's test yep same instance singleton pattern correctly implemented and this message is logged using a singleton logging system so as you can see it's quite easy to implement the singleton pattern and we've looked at different ways of implementing it using the classic singleton approach thread safe singleton approach the lazy generic singleton approach and then finally the static singleton logger approach that uses the eager instantiation if you enjoyed this video and would like to receive more of these videos please subscribe to our channel and like this video thanks for watching see you next time